Hello, everyone. Today's painting session will be about underwater world. So here I have a whale. But today we're going to have also the second task. We need to show the light and the shadow. So this is trying to make effect that the light from the sun is shining on the water. And this is, of course, all under the water. But so we will have to keep some areas very light, yellowish, very clean. And then so we can draw a whale, but we can also add, let's say, some other fishes, some jellyfish and so on. And the thing is that some part of them we need also to make yellowish. So it feels like the light is shining on them. And then the other part, of course, has to be darker. Yeah. And we will work it in progress because it means the shadow part, you need to work more darker and darker till we get this effect. Yeah? So, um, so as usually we start with a sketch. Yes. And then I suggest we, so we leave this, this corner going to be our light corner. And we don't even need to put pencil there, like so. Just leave it as clean as possible. There are going to be some very light, clean yellow color. Yeah. So now I would like you to plan your whale. Yeah. So how big you want it to be. And then when the place is left, we will add some other participants. Yeah. So let's let's start with the whale. It kind of, yeah, then has the long part, so the long line, then direction is changing a bit. Then we have a tail, yeah. So, yeah, somewhere like diagonal of the page and somewhere on here on this line, maybe a bit higher, yeah. So I start like, like maybe later, you know, I'll be correcting, maybe I'll want to make my way longer or shorter. Uh, so uh, let's say I can start with upper line. Yeah, so more or less the diagonal line of your paper. Uh, this is where good to place the objects, uh, where you want the viewer to, to look. Um, and here, where I feel like I will make a tail, yeah, so here, of course, it's getting more narrow. And here I'm adding, and here the belly, the belly line is more like all together. Yeah, it doesn't have like, it's not changing the direction. So it's more like... Yeah, and also, for example, I'm leaving yeah, enough space here in front of the head. Yeah, as usually we do, like, don't, um, you have to leave enough space, a bit of air, so it's not like sticking with its nose to the edge of the paper. And then making tail. Yeah, so here it kind of comes in two two parts. Maybe it's good for you to start here and there is like middle line. Yeah. And then this one is a bit shorter. So the one that is more far away from us is shorter, like smaller. And, and this side is a bit more longer because it's closer to us. Yeah. These are those uh, rules of perspective. And of course, you don't make like a huge difference here. Like it's, yeah, but a little bit. It's the same when we are drawing eyes of the person. And if the person is not looking straight at us, but it's kind of the head is turned, then I do the same. The eye that I see closer to me, I do a little bit bigger, but not like significance. Yeah, so it's...
Very nice. Yeah. So what? Then I have also this line of the mouth of whale, and it's coming not in the middle, but it's like it's repeating a little bit. Yeah. The, the upper line, it's closer to the upper line of whale. Yeah, so we have a little bit like we see more. Yeah. And it's also, it's not really short. Yeah, it's pretty much. Yes. Although now I feel my whale could be maybe a bit longer. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. I'm checking the whale. Exactly. I also feel, um, I feel maybe like yo yos could be also maybe a bit longer but then again the whales are different okay yeah looks looks good i think now when we do the um, yeah his his fins the hands it's it's going to look nicer yeah also remember like where is the eye of the whale yeah so this this spot here this is the eye so it's like the the line of the mouth is ending and here we have Oh, I can see the girls. Yeah, Ellen showing very nice. Yeah, good job, girls. Yeah, then every one of you will also reflect how much space is left on the paper. So um, to add other animals. Yeah. Then I'm looking. Okay, where is this fin? Like the hand of the whale is starting, and I see. Oh, it's starting like kind of in the middle of the body. So it's, yeah, and also helps me. Then I say, okay, somewhere in the middle. Yeah, if I go too high, looks strange, too low, also looks strange. And then I just try to notice, okay, the direction of lines. Here, the line goes like this, and then it's turning, but from this side, it's going a bit more like longer, yeah? It's kind of, I'm not even, not thinking about it as, the part of the body, but just like analyzing the direction of lines. And it's also pretty much big, yeah? So don't don't make it too short. Okay, maybe mine one now got a bit too bigger, but. Very nice, yeah. And then the same story. When I want to do the other uh, fin, then we see just like it's coming from the other side. Yeah, and I can say, aha, uh -huh, it's coming out from the line of the belly, and it's coming out like on the vertical line together with the first fin. So you know, like. I can hear it just go a little bit down, uh -huh, and then somewhere here, it's, it's going to be. Nice. We have our... Yeah, and then of course, like I can mark with the um, pencil if I want like this shadow part. So maybe a bit later it's gonna be easier for me to yeah, so like this, this, all this down will be in shadow, the upper and light, but nice. Um, shall we put someone else? under the whale or you prefer like just as this drawing like no other fishes or animals um, i think we should um, add some jellyfish and seahorses yeah okay because i see actually yes all of you girls we have you have more space so feel free to add jellyfishes um okay so let me get one some jellyfish Jellyfish has this, but of course, try to draw it like not. Also, jellyfishes can be also big, can they? But I'm drawing a bit like a small one because I want to emphasize that this is actually a whale and it's big. Yeah. And here I like. Mm -hmm. 
Well, now it's kind of your work, yeah? Hey, cool. Very nice, yeah, good, yeah, yeah, cool jellyfish. Now also think about the empty space you have. So then it looks nicer. Maybe you add like some other jellyfish, yeah? And again, if I make it small, that also feels more far away. If I make it bigger, it feels closer, yeah? So we can also work with this with deepness, yeah? My wheel turned out to be small, so... I think like I might want to add like uh like not like as big as the whale but like smaller than the whale like a turtle because I have enough space because my whale ended up being small. Perfect, very nice. So this is exactly Ellie understood well what I meant that you evaluate the empty space you have and you say okay then I should add someone else so my drawing looks nice and then Ellie said she's gonna add a turtle. So, um, yeah, for example, me personally, I would like my painting to be like this, but if you want, I can show you how to draw turtle or someone else if you, if you need to, let's say. Yeah, of course you can also go just through the, just with some other fishes. Yeah, I'm going to give you now some options. Yeah, so I'm, I'm leaving my drumming as it is. I don't want to more, I, I like just two jellyfishes. But let's say, for example, um, exactly, you want a turtle. Yeah, so the tur easy easy thing to do it is like we do the, the the oval, yeah, and we can do also like the border, yeah. And then we remember that the turtle, of course, has the head, and then the frontal arms are like longer, yeah. And um, the side ones are shorter. And the turtle also has a tail, yeah? So, and then of course we're drawing those cubes, yeah, those shapes on the, yeah? So this could be like, yeah, if you want, let's say, oh, I still have place, you know, I want just a fish yeah, and the fish is also, it's more like just the, this, um, it's like oval, but the edges are more pointy. And then of course you need to have like the fins. Yeah. And of course you need to have a, a tail. Yeah. Then you can have the eye and you can have some, I don't know, the fish can have different drawings, you know, like this could be the, yeah, if you like, you can add somewhere the fish. Um, then, um, whom else we can get? Ah, maybe you want, although, okay, this depends, because, like, um, the feeling of this drawing is more like everyone is swimming. So, for example, we can also add the, the shell with the, you know, um, but the shells, usually, they're, like, sitting on the ground, but depends, maybe you still want to. Let's maybe add someone else who is more like swimming. Okay, there are other fishes. There are also these fishes that are like this long, you know, those ones that like, I think they're also a bit dangerous, but nevertheless, we can also like add those ones. Okay, but also like be careful, don't over um, overdo your drawing. Yeah, so like making maybe it's like 
don't make it too crowded, let's say like this. Yeah. So be it's also the, the part of the job of, of the artist is to choose what to paint and what not to paint. Yeah. So it's um, yeah, so here I did also this this um the fishes that is more um So choose which, which whom you want to add. And of course you can do like maybe some like two, three jellyfishes, one or two fishes, one two to like the, the mount can also be. Yeah, so take your time. Yeah. Yeah, but also think about the space in between all your participants. So it's also not the same distance between each participant, yeah? So let's say maybe some of them more in one corner, then some space is more empty. Yeah, it's kind of make it, try to make it. Oh, I can, wow, this feels cool. <laughs> Lots of participants on Yo-Yo's drawing, very nice. Okay, so I, I see Yo-Yo is ready, well done. We wait for everyone. To have all um, all participants, and then then we move to paint. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and also feel free to move them. Like let's say maybe the fish is is going the other way. Yeah, so. Reminds me of uh, the last time we went to the beach, we saw dolphins in the water. Oh, so exciting! You saw dolphins jumping. Okay. Um. Well, let let me let me try to get. If you have space for the dolphin, let's let's do one. Yeah, usually dolphin is jumping, but also like. If they are um, just swimming, they could be like so maybe like me. So dolphin basically is a big fish. So it's uh, yeah. Then it also it has its fin like it's a bigger fin. Sometimes people even can say oh it's a shark, but it's not shark. Like dolphins also have this, and then the mouth is more like yeah and. And then they also have, so maybe this fin like is a bit too big. Yeah, okay, it looks more like sharky, but. But still it's different. Like it, I think this like, this part of sharks, it's more pointy. And on dolphins, it's more like, and then it also I, has. I don't know if I'm going to draw a dolphin because I already have like a bunch of like animals and I don't really like want to have any more. Yeah, no, it's cool. Thanks for sharing that you saw dolphins because, of course, we are drawing this underworld world. I think it's always so exciting to see them. Uh, so just anyway, I, I did this quick sketch of dolphin. Yeah, it's not the best dolphin, but um, just in case if someone um, got um, excited about dolphin idea. Yeah, so I, I tried to draw it also a bit long, so kind of swimming in the water. 
because usually it's also the drawings we see they're more like jumping too, so they are more like like you know curved but uh since we're painting the the underwater then yeah maybe it's it's um yeah, we don't do this shape uh you know like but um Yeah, okay, my dolphins today are not <laughs> the best, but cool. Yeah, so you all give me thumbs ups when ready to move to, to paint. I'm ready. This is how mine looks. Let me see. Hey, I like it. Yes, I like all the participants. Good job, Ellie. Juliet also ready. I saw her thumbs. Yay. Very good. So, uh, Pio, yeah? No, not yet. Okay, we give uh, some time for Pio to finish, and then we start it all together. Yeah. yeah, also, it's not that you have to put all these animals there. Yeah, I just made like it's an options, but you choose, yeah. And actually, art sometimes look looks better when it has less things than when it's like overdone, yeah, like too much of everything. And then uh, it depends, yeah. But also maybe it looks nice because then today we do like the upper part is more empty. It's just with the sunlight. And at the bottom, we're going to have the, yeah. So the girls who are ready, you can start like choosing the brushes. So how we choose the brushes? Yeah, it's always according what we're planning to paint. So let's say we're going to start with light. So then it means I need to cover a big area. Yeah, then of course I take a bigger brush. Later, when I need to do already like details on 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 my animals, then I take smaller. Yeah? So just according the size of what you're painting, then you take the the according with so. hmm? I'm gonna move this here. Yeah, I'm gonna put here so you see also more of my palette. Mm -hmm. Yay, thumbs up from Pio. Thanks a lot. Um yeah, then slowly moving. So first what you're gonna need, and as usually we start from light to dark. Yeah. So let's analyze again where we need to put our yellow. And this yellow will be not, so it's it'll, it will be mixed with white. We need it much more pale. So we do all this corner. And we remember that the yellow can be covered on top with all the rest of colors. So I actually go like more. I can not just this corner, but I do more and more of yellow. And you do the yellow also the upper part of all your animals. So I'll do also on top here of the my uh, jellyfishes. And here is another thing that I do before uh, I continue. I take a razor and I lighten up at least the upper parts. So at least the parts where I'm going to have this very light yellow. I don't want my pencil to be there very very strong yeah so i do upper part of jellyfishes upper part of and be, like the under it's going to be all in shadow so it doesn't matter we're going to be dark yeah but here where i have uh, lighter i'm lightening it up and then of course very well i clean up yeah so what i did here i kind of i didn't erase it so i mean 
erase it, but I still see it. And of course, I clean well all the eraser leftovers. I don't want them to be. Yeah, so just the upper, because you see here, yeah, it looks very clean. Yeah, otherwise, we're going to have like the dark pencil line there. And Very nice. Yeah, so you just clean up with the razor. You remember, you can blow all the leftovers. You can clean with the hand. You can take clean, dry brush. Also helps to, yeah? Because once the water is there, no pencil, nothing is can be back. And I'm starting. So I'm putting some yellow and also white. And the other thing I'll be using, I will not be putting my yellow very intense. I will use sufficient amount of water. So this, this my mix will be pretty much watery because then I'm kind of putting half transparent. Yeah, so here I'm mixing. I can even go to water, you know, grab with the brush some water and add here. So you see, it's like moving, it's very watery. Because in this case, I also do the way that my paper is playing the game also of whiteness. So I'm putting, and my paint is pretty much transparent. I can go then clean brush and go again with water. Yeah, so no worries, just like spreading it out. Very light. The lighter you're gonna put it, the better it looks. Yeah, and again, you remember that so here I did all the corner here, all the corner. And I can actually go even till my whale. And as we agreed, I'm doing the upper part of the whale as well. Yeah. And no worries, we can always make it, like we can always cover yellow with other paints. So actually I can, I can just, yeah. Spread it. Yeah, I mean, if I want, I can actually like make even whole my page yellow. Yeah, and then start working on this. But then it's like, it means just, okay, just extra paint. Yeah, so this could be one of the reason why not to do it the whole page uh, or like time. But in general, it's fine to, yeah. So what I did, I, I've covered the top of the whale and also it's this fin that is on top. And then all other of your animals, it, like at least the upper part or even, yeah, almost everything, you can also do this yellow. So we just show that there is some light coming on them. Yeah, this is why this, the painting looks effective because of this light and shadow game. Yeah. So here it's. And the other thing what we will need to do, and then you also, you kind of keep safe those yellow areas. And that's why it's better to do more of them than less, because then you are kind of more secure to cover. Otherwise then if I do precisely, so imagine if in this painting, I cover yellow just what I see yellow now, and then go around with, the paints like it's more complicated and it's and then my yellow parts can disappear yeah so it's better i mm -hmm. so our first thing without thinking much we just cover it all
Yeah, and we have our yellow base. Uh, the next steps, like you finish, you finish your yellow parts. I'll just explain. So it's gonna be kind of playing, mixing paints. So here it will be important to choose the colors that are mixing well one with another. Yeah, and we know that blue with green, they mix well. So maybe you have different greens or different blues. You can experiment. Yeah, some darker blue, some lighter, the same with. Yeah, and then it's more like different spots. So I'll show you also the technique. Like we take the paints, we mix them, then we can add water drops, separate water drops, it moves them. So in the end, it's more like letting your um, letting paints float themselves. And this is why it's also good when you have your paper like attached to cardboard and you can move your cardboard. So you can kind of play with those watery. Uh, Yeah, so here, for example, I took blue and green. Um, can, can I proceed with this next step or you need more time to finish yellow part? The bottom part looks um, a bit pinky. Uh -huh. uh, you, you mean on my, on my side it looks pinky or? Yeah, maybe, maybe it's like some, I don't know, white or reflection here. Um, yeah, sorry about that. Um, is it um, you color the whole whale and um the oh, yeah. is yellow? So actually, like yeah, I color it like the upper part of whale. The bottom not necessary. The bottom gonna be yeah, it's gonna be dark. And here also, I've covered like the top of jellyfishes. I made also this light yellow. Yeah. And yeah, so you also like. Uh, but it's also like feel free with this yellow don't really follow the rules of like the borders of the lines because later you can cover yellow with any blue with any green yeah it's gonna be Yeah, so what, what you need, you're covering very freely, almost like the half, the diagonal with yellow, and all the tops of your animals, like the upper part. You can even cover all your animal with yellow if you want, you know? It's like if you your fish is too small, don't worry, just do those yellow strokes. Because later you'll be adding the darker parts and leaving some yellowishy that will... Um, give the feeling, ah, uh, there is light on, on the top, yeah?
So, Juliet Ellie, you ready with your yellow parrot? Yeah, I think so. Very nice. Pio yo yo? No, not yet. Okay. Yeah. So just it shouldn't be like it shouldn't take much time because be free to go over your lines. It's like not that now I need to go around every animal, everything. Yeah. So if I wanted, I could all my page here could be yellow. Yeah. I could just fill up. So you see, I can move it. So I can make it, yeah, because as, as as we said, yeah, like I put yellow where it's for sure and I'm free, I just kind of can do it uh, all the way around, yeah? So sometimes artists even do like this, they do the pencil drawing and then they cover the whole page with some light, interesting color Usually it's like or yellow, sometimes orange or pink. And then they start um, painting on top and it gives a very nice like shiny effect, you know? You mean um, cover the whole animal too? Yeah, of course you can cover also the animals, yeah? Because I'm like, I try to explain again, so the important is that we have some we have yellow on the animals because later we're going to put some other color on our animals we're going to put green or we're going to put orange for fishes or something and we're going to put it on top of our yellow and we're going to just keep some parts yellow untouched and the others we're going to cover with with the paint and this will give this feeling that there is light on um on our animals yeah So um, for the next step, I've chosen light blue, dark blue, and I've chosen just one green that is like this uh, emerald green that is more towards the blue. And um, so as I've tried to mention earlier, the task is actually kind of to play with colors, yeah, to play with paint and water, make it is almost when we are painting with the watercolors and we, we let them float and we add water and somewhere they're like almost transparent and moving. And of course here at top, we do very like light colors, light blue, very light green. We can also reach it by just adding more water. And then the bottom you can see I've even like later was adding some purple, some darker, yeah. But of course, it's good to start with um, um, with very light colors, yeah? Okay, I'm going to wait till Julie's back and then we start.
Yeah, exactly. So I see you putting colors on palette and yeah, feel free to like make them a bit more watery already here on palette. So uh, yeah, like here I can make it also a bit more watery. Mm -hmm. yeah. So this is this because we're using acrylics and acrylics can be both like as if they're watercolors and if they're um yeah like oil paints. And what I do, so maybe like I can add, do another mix and I mix my green with some yellow and it's even lighter, you know. And now my task is to play, yeah, to play with all those bluish mixes. And then I can do, I can start putting as if it's like some spots, start it somewhere where it's safe. Let's start, let's say here at the bottom. Yeah, then we see how our paints are working out and then we do some stripes on top. Yeah, so I can put some, yeah, like the same, putting some green and then I can adding, I'm adding now just clean water on top. I can also make it move a bit or I can spread with the brush, maybe add some blue in, in there and I just spread it, you know, like also try, like, of course I control with my brush but I also let, yeah, and I can go moving my thing. Like, okay, if something happens like this, like the paint got onto my jellyfish, it's still watery. I can still clean it out. I can use my paper towel, yeah. And then once, once you feel like, once you already got this feeling how the paints here are playing, I can go and do like, because here on top, I need to do less. Yeah, I can do those like lines and then I spread them out more watery. Yeah, so here on top, we want much lighter colors. Yeah. And here at the bottom, I can do like more darker ones. Yeah. And here, and like very. Um, uh, and and I'm also moving all around my painting. Yeah, so I, I do a bit here, I do a bit there. But of course, this is our yellowish corner. We try to keep it more clean, more, more transparent. Yeah. And if I have somewhere too much, I can always go with paper towel. While it's wet, I can always take the stuff out. Yeah. And like this, we take time to play around. And then, yeah, then later we go and, um... yeah, so here, here I have different, like of green, blues, they're also mixing nice run together yeah here i go a bit like also around so here of course like the whale i'm already saving this yellow of the whale yeah i'm not going with the with those greens and blue on tops Yeah, so maybe here, like I try, so you can also again see, yeah, the upper part very light and the bottom darker. So the bottom, we can like, we'll be working more and more, like adding more and more paint. On top, you add a little bit and then you, it's, it's done. Yeah. But at the bottom, Yeah. And and the more you play, so remember this this um, technique when you put paint, and then you go with your brush to water, and you kind of grab some water and and you put just a drop of water, 
and then it should start like moving yeah if it's not moving you help with your brush you can also um yeah move move your this palette around like the the base where you have paper yeah? so yeah but of course those yellow parts of your animals those ones like you try saving and you go around and later then it's already you you correct if it's yeah because we it's not about your animals to all to be yellow it's about having some yellow spots on your animals so um Yeah. In some paintings, when you see, you can see those as if it's like light stars, let's say, uh, going. And to make them, of course, it's important to have not to have it all dry already. It should be still some, some wet. But what you do, you take like clean brush with watery and you try like wiping out the lines. Yeah. But every time I'm passing here with my brush, so I'm kind of removing some of the paint and trying to leave those, ah, you see, I did mistake. Don't go twice with the brush. Like you go once, clean it in the water, clean with paper towel, yeah? So you can also try making those vertical lines from, from this corner, yeah? As if it's shining on top of our, yeah? and then I come back also and remember the under part like everything under your animals is darker because the animals itself they also give shadow yeah and to have this effect of light we need to make it darker yeah we can't let it to be all like very light because then it will not work this contrast yeah, we need to make dark enough for it to feel that, uh-huh. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. And you can start it also putting dark color to the shadow part of your animals. So like the, the whale here, yeah, it's... Um, But still, for example, this might be not enough blue, dark blue, yeah? Maybe I'll need later to mix it with some violet or, yeah, it has to be more, more. And it's good to go and kind of jump around the painting. Not that you do one corner than the other, but it's more like I take one color and I jump with it. Like I take green and I do like different green spots. Yeah, then... yeah. Like now try to jump around, mix interestingly all your... Um... Yeah, color is so interesting mix of blue, interesting mix of green, them in together. And then we always come back and we do them. Then we evaluate where we need more shadow. 
so on. Yeah, so later maybe you will feel you're actually liking the, the darkness, yeah. And in this case, you go to maybe to violet, you mix. Mm -hmm. Yeah, also remember to use paper towel. Yeah, it can remove some. If you did somewhere like too much, you can always like lower, take off the paint or lower the intensity. Even with paper towel, you can also get some interesting, um, you know, like shapes uh, of your water. So it's like. And then also coloring other animals of yours. Yeah, maybe it's not always have to be like very detailed. Sometimes it can be like, you know, just more abstract. So you just it's like the feeling. Yeah? Since we're doing this kind of abstract water, so it can also work for the other your animals. You can do it just like the silhouette. Yeah. Yeah, because when you look artworks of others, you can often see yeah, them being um, like half realistic. Yeah, it's just like 
you paint something, something you don't paint, and it looks also good. Mm -hmm. My eye got too dark here. Oop. But the main here is more like try to have fun moving colorless paints around. Yeah? So just trying to get some interesting shape mixes. Yeah, and it's often when we let the, the paint yeah, move it by itself, we get more interesting. Also remember, don't overdo. Sometimes it's better let it let it dry first. Then if you see, okay, it's not enough, you go again. But uh, yeah, because sometimes it's not so clear while it's still wet. So you can um, yeah. But the main part, I'm I'm letting. I'm still leaving very light there. Yeah, and I did those washouts, yeah, with the brush. Yeah. What's also important, let's say, I can take more paint and do a bit more darker, like right at the bottom of the whale, like right under the, the tail. Yeah, so, like, don't be afraid to make too dark there because actually, exactly this will make. Um, Will make it look nice because it will it gives the contrast. It will not work if everything is light. It works exactly when we do something very dark, close to light. Yeah. Example, I already feel I'm a bit already overdoing my drawing. Um, but here I'll, I'll try to show you closer my Medusa. So if you're working already on your small animals, 
Yeah, this is what it, it was white, it was yellow I did. And then added some just kind of corner of darker, but still it feels like if there is light on Medusa's. I can also go a bit more around, make a bit darker the water around that with also it will again make make it look more shiny that there is light, yeah? So we try to practice this effect of creating this shiny effect and this shiny effect of light, we can get it when we uh, put dark next to it. Yeah, if we don't put dark to um, next to the light, it's not shining. Yeah? This is the So, for example, I can work also, show you, on the other animals. I'm going to move to the side. I'm going to show you a little bit also what I mean, like if, because you all have other animals. So it means, let's say I had my yellow on my turtle, or I had yellow on my fish, yeah, on my medusa, and the jellyfish, I mean. Yeah, so we, we all prepared, we all did this yellow story. And what I want to do now, now I want to put, say, like some darker parts. Yeah. But I leave, I leave some parts light in the fish. Yeah. Like the upper ones. So then it feels that the fish is, um, So the, the top, there is light, yeah? So the same story with my turtle. I'm gonna add a bit more green. Yeah, so of course I'm making, let's say my turtle green, but some parts I'm still leaving yellowish. I want to say and to show that there is light, yeah? Yeah, so this is like a bit sketchy, but let's say this is the, the idea. Yeah, it's also like this, this. So at the bottom I put darker, at the top I leave those light. Yeah, and can be sometimes it doesn't have to be like really a lot. I can even like cover almost everything with this darker, but uh, still it leaving a bit of yellow shows the
Um, is this okay? Let me check. Our first painting's coming. Hey, very interesting. I um, like I've, I've, I've used my technique of, of using two brushes. One brush of gets a, um, the white color and then the other brush is just tapping so um, it makes those bubble effects. Nice, that's cool. I can also always suggest, so you can always come back with your yellow. But in this case, so if you say, you say, oh, my painting got a bit too dark, I want to add a bit more sunshine there. Then you can go back to your yellow, but this time you already need it not that watery. Like you can paint on top, but with the, like, if it's already dry, where you've been painting, then you go uh, with more, let's say, yeah. Um, yeah, with, with yellow on top. And then it also gives like, it comes back like, oh, the painting comes back with light again. Yeah, so you can also experiment it in some areas of your painting where you say, oh, I want a bit more sunshine light there. No problem, you can just, uh... yeah, but it has to be of course dry. So the area should be dry already. And you're like re repainting it with a bit. Yeah. But cool, Pio. It looked awesome. I'm very, very excited to see how others are doing. So this painting can be actually very fast because we are, it's like improvisation. We are yeah, getting all those watery stripes. Yeah, but still we are careful. We are saving yellow areas because it's the light yeah. and I'm pretty much done with mine I just want to wait for it to dry so I can do the sunlight rays better but it's still very wet okay that's a yeah that's a good thing so what I could suggest you Juliet so if you want to do those light lines one way is good actually while it's still a bit wet but then it's important your brush is clean and you kind of just like wipe it but every time you wipe it you clean your brush in the water in the uh, napkin and then you come back so while it's still a bit wet you can actually like you're just taking off the paint you're kind of coming back to the paper and like this you can also get those stripes and this is the way the stripes, they look a bit more natural rather than just painting them on top. Yeah. Um, Well, actually, I'm gonna also take take the tape off on mine because I feel I'm fine. I don't want to overdo it. For example, this painting could be also done very nicely with uh, watercolors because again, it's all about like just letting float and make it all. Um, let let the paint work. So not you and the brush, but paint itself um, floating. No? So this is my whale with two medusas. Mm -hmm. And I'm looking forward to see the rest artworks.
Well, I'm excited to see if someone also get this light effect, if it worked. It's not easy, yeah, to uh, create this light and shadow. Yeah, but with time, you practice it. Yeah, um, yeah, but you can also, when you explore the art history and the paintings, you can notice how important actually it is, this connection between light and the dark areas. And once you manage to make them well, then your painting looks like exciting. That's, yeah, the viewer's eye is like attached more to it. So, um, yeah, this is something very important to practice in your art, yeah, the, um, where are the shadows, where is the light, and make, uh, yeah, make them effective. Yeah. Nice, um, I'm gonna stop the recording, but we, of course, we stay to share all the, um, all the results, yeah, so take your time to finish. I'm still here. Um, yeah, excited to see all the rest paintings. And for those who were watching the recording, hope you enjoyed. If you have any questions, you can always email me. Yeah, I'll be happy, of course, to see your results.